So let us try to understand. We were discussing the cathode rays, right? We were discussing the cathode rays, and we knew that we 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 from our own arguments we kind of argued that they are fundamental particles, right? They are fundamental particles. But then again, the question came: if they are fundamental fundamental particles, then what is the charge in them? Because we we saw that they are negatively charged, right? Negatively charged. So the question that was that that was paramount was what is the charge in them? Correct. So we come to the to the measurement of the charge to mass ratio. So measurement of measurement of of charge to mass ratio understand and it was thomson okay it was done by thomson who was actually credited with finding the electrons and was awarded a nobel for that nobel prize for that right <coughs> so so but before we go into how he did that let us try to understand how charges behave in the presence of an electric field and in the presence of a magnetic field understand so so let us try to understand let us say i have i have an 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 electric field that is directed like this okay so so let us say i have an electric field in this direction and it's its magnitude is e it is it is a vector quantity then then we had seen that the force that a charge experiences when placed in this field is equal to what it is equal to q into e get that it is equal to q into e understand so 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 force so force on the on the, on the charge is i'll i'll write it here so force on the charge is equal to to q into e right and we and we had seen that this is actually a scalar multiplication of a vector and we had we had seen what scalar multiplication vector results in when it is positive then this force points in the so if 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 this charge is positive then we had seen that this force points in the same direction as as the electric field so so force will be like that right and if it was a, a negative quantity then if it was say say minus q then the force will point in the opposite direction okay so if if this was minus q then the force will be something like that this will be the force correct this we had seen so what happens when there is a magnetic field okay you just know this that in a magnetic field in a in a in a magnetic field in a magnetic field the the charge moves like this q into v cross v okay here it moves like q like force force in the magnetic field okay magnetic field is denoted by a vector b so we write it as fb so so this is the this is the magnetic force magnetic force and and this magnetic force is equal to this right q v cross b understand 
Now, what is this? This is actually a cross product between two vectors. Okay. So, so let us first of all understand what the cross product of two vectors is. So, let us say, let us say, let us say, the the magnetic field is is something like this. Right? So, so it is something like that. Okay? So, so that is the magnetic field. Correct? Let there be a charge in this field which goes like that. Okay? So, so let there be a charge, charge, which is, let there be a, be a charge, let there be a charge which is which is say station here and which is directed upwards like this okay so 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 this is your charge and this is the velocity vector of the charge right so i have the velocity vector of the charge and i have the 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 field vector right now, how do I calculate the cross product? Let us let us understand that first in short. So, what do we do is is we we shift this vector such that the tails of both the vectors. That means the tail of the tail of the tail of the field vector and the tail of the velocity vector they come together. So I shifted this B vector like this, right? Now what you do is you, you pick up the first vector in the cross product and first vector here happens to be V. So this is your first vector, right? And the second vector is B, which is this vector. So the first thing that you do is make them co-initial, bring their tails together by shifting them parallel to wherever they are. So I have done that. Now you take the first vector, you with, with this as a fixed hinge, let this be fixed and try to bring this vector to coincide with this vector. Try to bring the first vector to coincide with the second vector through the smaller angle okay through the smaller angle understand understand so so the first vector we try to coincide with the second vector by turning it through the smaller angle so what direction do we move in we kind of move in the in the clockwise direction to do that is it not clockwise direction now if you if you turn a right handed screw in the clockwise direction okay so 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 let us say there is a right handed screw screw that that you are trying to turn in a clockwise direction Okay, so so this is a right-handed screw. If you try to move, if if you try to keep the head of the screw like this, okay, okay, like this, and try to turn this like this, then, then this tip. So so this head, this head I have shown here, right, flat, flat towards you. Let this be a wooden plank. So you keep this this tip on the wooden plank, head pointing towards you. You take a screwdriver and try to turn it clockwise. What happens? Linearly, it will move into the plan, right? It will move into the, into the paper, into the screen, okay? Into the screen. So, so that is, so if I, if I show it in 3D, then, then, then the, the direction in which the force gets applied is shown by this, right? So that is, this is actually, uh, the, the, there's a limitation. I just cannot draw a 3D on a 2D. 
so so we do it like that so so this is into the paper right right into the paper perpendicular to it okay so this is into the paper that is only about the direction correct that is the direction of this vector now what is the magnitude so 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 f is 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 defined as f is defined as magnitude wise fb is equal to q into v into b into sin of the smaller angle what is this angle this is 90 degree so so the direction is q v b understand we get that the direction is qvb the the magnitude is qvb the direction is into the plane of the paper so this is a scalar multiplied quantity with field and this is a cross product with the field understand that you just keep that into your mind fine because then we'll be able to find out how thomson actually was able to find out the charge upon mass ratio right okay so 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 what he did he used an apparatus he used an apparatus which looked something like this okay this was the apparatus that he used now what what has happened in this apparatus in this apparatus this this is the north pole of the magnet you see this is the north pole of the magnet and, and it is again kind of coming towards us right that is a way to show so 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 the this is the north pole this is the north pole so the field lines are actually the field lines are actually are actually the magnetic field lines they are actually originating from here and moving like that you see originating from here and moving like that you see the drawing so so they are kind of like that you see that starting from the north pole and coming towards the south pole the south pole is shown like this but the south pole is actually here right in front of your eyes and north is exactly into the plane of the paper right so the whole field is actually perpendicular to the plane of the paper right then there is a cathode and this is the anode so so here you have connected the negative negative the 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 negative uh, negative of the battery and here you have connected the positive of the battery so what happens the field is something like this so field here originates on the anode and terminates on the cathode the green line that i'm drawing right just look at that okay so it it kind of originates here terminates here right originates here terminates here right so the direction is is something like something like that okay it is it is pointing in this direction from the anode to the cathode correct right? so this is what i call a crossed field understand this is called a crossed field why because the electric electric field is in the plane of the system is 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 in this plane so the electric field so the electric field is is kind of like this understand from the cathode to the anode okay it is like this from the anode to the cathode i'm very sorry this is anode this was cathode this was cathode right and and this magnetic field is coming out of the paper right it is coming out of the paper and how do you show that 
when something is coming out of the paper we show it like like a dot is it not if it is going into the paper we show it as a cross right so so this is a dot this is how the magnetic field will look so this is the schematic diagram of the of 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 this do we understand now what you do you are trying to shoot an electron that i'll show in red like this so you are trying to shoot an electron which is like this right you're trying to shoot an electron now let us try to analyze the forces that it will feel right what kind of force will will this feel no hold on this this what you see here is an electron gun okay this is used to actually accelerate the this part is actually used to accelerate the electrons so as you increase the voltage electrons from here will get emitted and will shoot forth right and and will will pass through a perforated anode and it will go like that the electric field is being provided by this understand the electric field is being provided by these two plates this and this this being positive and this being negative so electric field okay is like that is from top to bottom you see that and this is the direction pointing downwards pointing uh, uh, let me let me draw it with the blue one pointing downwards no still not dark enough still not dark enough so so let me use use black okay so here 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 is it visible downward pointing downward pointing downward okay so i'll have to do do some changes here some a little bit of change here and that will be sort of this that this is not the electric field we are talking about right so electric field is actually 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 directed top to bottom right so electric field is is somehow like this understand the electric field is like that okay so top to bottom top to bottom top to bottom now let's try to understand just consider so so this is your electric field the blue lines and those those violet lines those which are coming out they are the magnetic field right this is the schematic representation of of, of this okay get the point now let us try to understand what happens this electron will feel an electric force so if this is an electron if this is an electron okay this will feel an electric force in in or, or i should have drawn it in red right so if this is an electron this will feel an electric force as qe right but e itself is negative negative so it is like the scalar multiplication of this vector by a negative number now when a vector gets multiplied by a negative number it flips in the upward direction right so what will be the force force will be e into e and and this being negative 
it will experience a force in the upward direction so it will experience a force force like this understand so this is your force due to the electric field understand on this electron we get the point so if only the electric field is switched on what will happen the electron will shoot forth and as it is moving it is also being applied there is a force that is being applied upwards so so the electron will try to take take a trajectory like this and will come and hit hit the the this plate somewhere here at point a if there is only an electric field do we get that do we get that now let us try to see what happens when there is only a, a magnetic field right there is only a magnetic field so this magnetic field is actually pointing outward right pointing outward so so let me draw it in 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 a, in a 2d so how does it look it looks as if if something is coming out it will look like that right it look like that and the electron that is moving like this so v vector of the electron is like that no so this vector th this 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 purple vector is actually pointing towards you right and and this is the this, this is your b vector this is your this is your this is your this is your b vector this is your b vector the red one the red one is is the v vector this is this is the hold on so this is the v vector right and v comes towards b right so from from horizontal it comes towards b so looking from upwards it is a clockwise movement right do you see that looking from upwards this is a this is nothing but a clockwise movement so if there is a screw there okay with with the head pointing towards you what happens to it 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 will have a tendency to go down right so this is your this is your this is your force due to the magnetic field so left to itself if there was only the magnetic field only the magnetic field the electron will move 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 and kind of come here and will hit will hit a point somewhere somewhere here which which here is shown as c you see that? if there is nothing else if there is only a, a magnetic field then then it will come and hit it here right okay with that now what happens how was this experiment conducted let us try to understand that he first of all switched on switched on only the electric field and saw that the electrons went and struck here right at point a then he then he switched on only the magnetic field and saw the electrons hitting here correct now now he adjusted e and b in such a manner that the electron did not deflect and hit b so i can 
arrange these two forces to cancel each other so that this whole thing comes and hits in the center e as if there are no electric or magnetic fields right and when will that happen when will that happen because you see the upward force that is being applied is e e right and the downward force that is being applied is q v b we had just seen here q here is e v b what happens what happens you can if you adjust this gets cancelled your e upon b such that it is equal to the velocity of the electron what will happen the charge will go undeflected understand do we understand you can apply you can arrange these charges these fields i'm sorry the fields in such a manner that the moment their ratio is equal to the velocity you you understood why, why this is happening this is nothing but qvb term that we had got here get it so qvb this is qvb instead of q i have e right instead of q i have e so and instead of q here i have an e here i have arranged them one is acting in the upward direction another is acting in the downward direction i have tried to arrange them in such a manner that they are equal the moment they are equal there is no deflection and the electron comes and hits the plate here at b and when is that possible when the electric field magnitude e e q is equal to e right is equal to q v b again q is equal to e that's why i have written this as e which is the charge on the electron that we still don't know fine so what happens they get cancelled and e upon b becomes equal to v correct now just try to understand electrons are such small particles that you are not able to to see them let alone measure its velocity how to measure its velocity you cannot able to see it correct so what happens but i can measure my e i can also measure my b that is a measurable quantity so what have i done by letting it go and strike straight and measuring the fields e and b i have in effect measured the velocity of the electrons do you see that do we see that the roundabout way in which you have measured the velocity of the electrons correct now what happens you know this distance the distance from here the distance from here the center of this to this point is known okay that is known that is measurable right now you switch on your electric field correct and measure this distance measure this distance let this be say s that's measurable right measurable because you will have some zinc sulfide sulfide coating here it will keep on blipping here for a for a given electric field and after after having marked that point you can actually measure this with a microscope right you are looking at the whole thing with a microscope and you are able to measure it up to micrometers right so it's pretty accurate and instrument so what happens is what happens now when there is a force getting applied on the particle in the upward direction which is equal to e e for for a distance now let this distance be l right for a distance l now try to understand now it is pure mathematics 
okay i already have the velocity of the particle correct by the ratio of e and b now it moves a distance l so will i not be able to find out the time in which it moves this distance l yes so that time is equal to l upon v is it not all this distance it is moving with a velocity v so this is the time in which it has remained in that field before it struck the screen right now this particle has a mass m right and it that did not have it did not have any velocity in this direction why because it was absolutely moving in this direction right so in this direction in this direction let us say this is y direction its initial velocity is equal to 0 you see that there was no initial velocity in that direction so if there was no field and it would have continued it would have continued straight without moving even a micrometer above it so the initial velocity in the y axis direction was zero do you understand that understand that yes now there must be some acceleration upwards so uy is zero what is the acceleration upward the acceleration upward i again denote by ay and what will be that acceleration ay is equal to e e force upon mass no because in the upward direction the force that is being applied is is the force due to electric field and force due to electric field is q since q is equal to e this is equal to e e this is equal to the electric force so the force applied in the upward direction divided by mass is the acceleration in the upward direction do we see that hmm? now if you write the equation of motion then what does it look like let us let's let's create some space and write that in the upward direction so sy s in the upward direction is equal to uy t plus half ay into t square do you see that this is s is equal to ut plus half ad square the second equation of motion that you already know i am just applying it in the upward direction y direction right now sy i have already measured this is s this is measurable quantity this is known to us is equal to 0 into t plus half into what is this this ay is e e upon m into what is t t is l square upon v square what is v v is e by b you see that so so this distance s if you have measured it is actually equal to half e not known to us this is what i am looking for into e e is something that is measurable this is the electric field upon m i still don't know into l square upon v i am writing as e by b so i'll have to write an e square here and b square here right e square upon b square b square goes up now what does it give you it's remarkable right what does it give you i, I, I i'm writing it here okay so s is equal to half e l square upon m half e l square upon m into b square upon e right is equal to that so i get e upon m ratio as 2 s e 
एस ई अपॉन एल स्क्वायर बी स्क्वायर एस इज समथिंग एस इज इज समथिंग दैट इज मेशर ई इज समथिंग दैट इज मेशर एल इज समथिंग दैट इज मेशर बी इज समथिंग दैट यू मेशर यू सी this is this magnetic field this is measurable this electric field we produced it we we were able to measure it this is the distance this this vertical distance this is measured right this is measured l is the distance from where the particle comes into the the center of this to this from where the particle starts getting into the field right this is also measurable so from here he was able to calculate the the charge upon mass ratio of the electrons and that came out to be equal to 1.758820 into 10 to the power 11 coulomb per kg so he was not able to find the charge he was not able to find the mass but somehow the ratio was calculable understand now it will take another famous experiment the millikan's drop millikan's oil drop experiment for the charge on the electron to be found out and the moment you got the charge you will immediately get the mass understand so this is how the ways of science are things which seem to be absolutely unfathomable absolutely incalculable absolutely invisible still can be can be found out and what do you need not maths not physics not chemistry you need something for persistence right this persistence coupled with the with the with the theories the scientific theories that have led to the to the advancement of science always okay